Hello again to all and none, and welcome back to the Great Partition in Europa Universalis 4. I'm Paragon Saber, and uh, this war over here, started by Nitra against Venice, a coalition war, is still ongoing and still devastating. You would almost think it was the League War with how many tags are involved, but that's not the case. In fact, part of me really wants to go in, tag switch to either Austria or uh, Bohemia, the leaders of the leagues, and fire that, but... I, I just don't want to interfere in this campaign itself. If I were streaming, perhaps, on Twitch, uh, I would ask all zero of you whether uh, <laughs> whether someone wanted to see the League War fired. I'm guessing the, the answer would be yes, but uh, as I've said before, I really want this to be a baseline playthrough. You know, no interference from me, uh, all the cores retained, etc., etc., because after this is established, after we've seen what happens without my interference and uh, without any really special situations, I can then go in and make those special situations happen. So last time we did see Kiva white peace with Russia, but uh, Russia then turned around and attacked its longtime ally in Perm, taking all of its territory save for Sheridan, which is an excellent province, especially that far in the north. It's, uh, they've probably chopped down a lot of trees for, uh, for heating, that's all I'm going to say. But uh, Russia has done pretty well for itself in the last couple episodes, consolidating a lot of western Siberia. Just needs to take Ustvim from Novgorod and uh, Sheridan from Perm. I've mentioned that this war between uh, Nitra and Venice has been ongoing for a long time. Actually, Nitra's side winning, despite the awful situation over in Odiev. Uh, we're not actually seeing too many people actively going after Venice's territory, so I'm guessing a lot of the people in Venice's trade league have been sieged down by Nitra and his allies. We'll just see how that goes. They uh, did form Prussia. Mazovia, with an embezzling ruler, uh, actually managed to... Well, more that uh, Mazovia's embezzling ruler to pay off debts, sold Konigsberg to then Brandenburg, and Brandenburg went and formed Prussia because of that. So, uh, welcome Prussia. Always nice to see some AI space marines. Down here in India, Bahmanis grew at the expense of Bengal. That was either last episode or a couple episodes ago. Uh, and now going after Nagaur. Unfortunate. I wanted Nagaur to do well for themselves. Actually, uh, Bahmanis' army just there. I don't know if Nagaur lost anything there. Anyways, uh, Nagaur did grow at Afghanistan's expense. Afghanistan no longer protected by Persia, and uh, that's actually the reason for that, uh, for Bahmanis' army being there. Persia and Bahmanis are attacking Afghanistan, so uh, that protection gone for the Afghans, and their state likely to be crushed between their neighbors in Persia, Kiva, and, uh, well, Bahmanis not a neighbor, but an ally all too willing to help Persia, especially in such an easy war. Japan finally consolidated, the Ashikaga Shoguns managing to integrate their last vassal in Wesugi, and so Japan has formed, guessing they might want to take the last couple provinces from Ainu. Actually no, Ainu a tributary state of Japan, so uh, really Japan tends to stay kind of isolationist, I don't see them conquer that much, but uh, Korea's looking pretty weak, and uh, well there aren't a bunch of, there's not a wall of tributaries for Japan to have to deal with, so. so we'll see if they can expand their influence a little bit. That's enough blabbing for now, let's see how this coalition war plays out. It's probably high time to check the Great Powers again sometime soon, but uh, I think I'm going to try to leave that until after the 1st of January 1600. Not sure if I'm going to be able to catch that, but I'll try to keep an eye on the uh, the date counter up there, and uh, if I can stop it uh, at the turn of the century, I will. We'll see who gets global trade as well, assuming that spawns in the year of 1600. Right now, it's looking like the English Channel is the richest trade node in Europe, with some competition from Genoa, Lubick, and Seville. Uh, Zanzibar at 9.8, so that's not going to 
compete. Persia at 21.6, not quite enough, but close. Anything out east looking good? Uh, Beijing at only 9.3, Nippon at 9.4. So, yes, looking like, uh, for now, like global trade will spawn in the English Channel trade node. So likely in London. Uh, I, definitely not the first time I've seen global trade spawn there. I think actually the two most uh, common places for that to spawn are London and Valencia, depending on whether Genoa or the English Channel is the richest trade note in the game. You'd think Venice would have more of a shot, but just kind of lagging behind despite Venice's power. Uh, a lot of that probably has to do with Austria perhaps still collecting in Vienna. I'm not sure. I thought the war was over there for a little bit, but uh, not. It just looks like Odiev has been pieced out. Maybe? No. Odiev's still in it. So the coalition members swooping in and just saving Odiev from a bunch of war exhaustion at the very least. Uh, the war continues. A large stack starting to move into Venice's provinces in the eastern Adriatic now. I'm not going to outright say things not looking good for them. There's still a lot of tags on Venice's side, but we'll just have to see. Poland, though, no longer involved in that war. So Venice now only fighting against Nitra, Hungary, Crete, Odiev, and Germion, but they are down by negative 32%. Do have Gascony on their side, helping them out, sieging down uh, Hungary's only province and cap... Well, not only province. Hungary does have Altenia right now. But uh, sieging down Hungary's capital in Toronto. So I think Venice's side is a fair bit stronger at this point. We'll just have to see if their uh, lower war score comes back to bite them. We do see ODF's 28k stack on Istria, trying to siege down that fort. Not sure where Nitra's army is at the moment. Ah, oh, there they are. They might actually be looking to try to take down this Gascon stack. Uh, Gascon does have a 5-1-3? Nah, 5-1-2. Yep, Nitra did get involved in that battle, but oh, some reinforcements there from Frankfurt. Saving the day for Gascon sending Nitra packing. Poland's friends... Sorry. Uh, Venice's friends might not all be the strongest, but uh, they're pulling through. I mean, Gascony's not weak by any means. Uh, they haven't done much expanding recently, but uh, they were at one time a great power. I think they've got over 200 development. This is a very rich region. Uh, over here, we did see Normandy finally, for the love of all that's holy, uh, eaten by Brittany. Level 4 forts have emerged. Tech 14 has uh has come. I think it might actually be time for like Tech 15 or 16 now. Austria on Tech 15, that's generally a pretty good gauge of uh, where the world should be. Those who don't have Tech 15 at a very, very large disadvantage. Uh, that one, I think it's Mauritian Infantry or something. Uh, regardless, it's a tactics difference, and I think it, it, there's a change of like plus one Infantry Shock or something. Or maybe it's plus one Infantry Fire. Uh, regardless, <laughs> okay, Russia's gone after uh, Novgorod again for a second. I thought that was the city of Viborg going after its former Novgorodian masters, but no, they're uh, they're trying to protect them. Denmark's still alive, not doing much. Russia actually on Tech 16. They have a six... Uh... No, they actually have an empress too, Yekaterina, a Tsaritsa. And, uh, well... That five points in military, helping Russia reach Tech 16. Good for them. <laughs> Another round of Astrakhani separatists. Maybe not as prolific as the Bulgarians, but pretty close. Speaking of the last round of Bulgarians, uh, I don't know if... I, I thought I'd seen some Kandari spawned uh, Bulgarians over here, but regardless, we did see the city of Vizin cease... City of Vidin cease to exist. Flipped over to the... Bulgarians, yet again. This time, Bulgaria allied with Ragusa. And we now have the city of Burgas existing too. So many trading cities being spat out over here. Even have 
Oh, we even have Achaea <laughs> released in Athens. Venice just saying, I want a vassal here, a vassal there, a vassal everywhere. Uh, actually only has four now, Achaea, Bosnia, Epirus, and Montenegro. Seems that they either lost control of Ragusa or just let him go. Regardless, uh, that's how that goes. And Croatia has just steadily gotten more provinces. Uh, this Serene Doge, 72, a 556. He's been re elected a few times. Uh, regardless, this Serene Doge, not an embezzler, so. I'm not sure how Croatia has come into possession of all of these, especially considering they're not they're not allied to Venice, they're not a vassal of Venice. I, I'm just not sure. Glad that Theodora is still alive, but uh, can't help but wonder how long that's going to last. Right now, their army getting beaten into the dirt by Riga. They are only on Tech 14 versus Riga's Tech 15. I think that just goes to show how much of a difference that makes, though Riga also did have a 4-2 general to Theodoro's 2-2. That's also, uh, you know, something that makes a difference. Afghanistan is almost gone. So they have, in fact, been partitioned between Kiva, Persia, and, uh, well, Persia with some help from Bahmanis. They now only hold on to the provinces of Ghazni, Bela, and Thata. Ladakh actually expanding quite a bit there, too. Uh, I don't know if they declared their own war, but uh, regardless, they expanded at uh, Afghanistan's expense. Yarkin formerly looking okay, now just down to Yangi Hassar here in Central Asia. Uh, Delhi actually owning the center of trade in Kashgar. That's got to be nice for them. Kiva looking as good as they can, but... One can't help but wonder how long it's going to be before Persia comes for them. That guarantee broken, and uh, that also means that they're not protected by Russia anymore either. So this war has ended. I don't see very much having uh, changed. Nitra has retained its alliances, so I think that might have just been a white piece. Uh... Probably just due to war exhaustion, length of war ticking up for everybody, and there's, there's Maria being uh, released in Achaea as well. Venice just going vassal happy. I don't know if that's... Does that have something to do with this Doge's personality? Uh, I'm not sure. If uh, one of those two highly positive traits causes leaders to release more vassals. But, I mean, all of those were Venetian cores, and it's not like he can make those join the Trade League either. I mean, we've seen him release quite a few trading cities. Uh, the ones that still remain being Visoki and Burgas. City of Cremona, formerly one as well. But now having joined uh, the Hangiatic League under Lubick. By the way, Siena managing to take Milan. They have done quite well for themselves. Uh, I think they're rather lucky that they haven't been at odds with Austria yet. Austria supporting Bosnia's independence from Venice. Allied with Gascony, Cologne, Sardinia, and Siena. So that's got to definitely be helping out uh, Siena there. They might have been able to even throw Austria's might around a few times. So things have really calmed down in Europe now. Uh, I think Prussia appears to have grown, and actually the Teutons uh, up here in Tuchola. There were some Teutonic separatists up there for Poland, and uh, Poland's not able to get to them through Prussia, so Mazovia jumping on that, though uh, also fighting Pomerania, so... The Teutons spawned again, did manage to get some allies, even joined Novgorod's Trade League. That's a lot of people that uh, might possibly be protecting them. From the onslaught here of Mazovia, are they the only one fighting this? Or did they call people in? They did call in Gotland, Prussia, Ansbach, and Friesland, so... 
We'll see if that OPM swarm manages to help out. Looks like Russia is done with Novgorod again, has gotten rid of that little enclave there, and has conquered all the way up to Anar. Cutting Novgorod, not really in half. Kola, a large province, but only three development. Actually has a trading post there. Interesting choice by Novgorod. You'd think they'd be uh, focusing on the Baltic Sea. Have they put trading posts down over here? Neva and Estuary. We do have Niland, Abwo, Osterboten, Kajanaland, Priozersk, Savalax. I don't see them having put down a trading post in the Baltic area. Uh, or in any of their provinces left in the Novgorod trade node, so... Again, Kola just an odd place to put one. <laughs> but, uh, their choice. Nope. Russia wants Kasim. Goodbye, Kasim. I'd have really hoped that Odiev or uh, Theodora would have jumped on them first. That's going to make an interesting little, uh... It's not completely disconnected from Russia, but uh, that province would have really looked better as I... In my opinion, it would have looked best as part of Odiev. But it's going to go to Russia. So many people being released over here. Good lord, Venice. How long is it until they can attack Kandar again, or are they doing that? Uh, no, Kandar trying to take back its uh, provinces from the, yet again, spawned Bulgaria. Though the combined Bulgarian Ragusan force actually sending Kandar packing. Bulgaria on Tech 15, Kandar on Tech 15, so that might have just been the general there, though. Well, Kandar has a 3-2-3. Three, three. Uh, looks like Bulgaria has a 3-3-3, three, 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 so yeah, perhaps that uh, turned the tides there a little bit for Bulgaria. Who knows? They might actually grow at Kandar's expense, but then it's going to be a question of who of the majors around them will, uh, will collapse on them. It is now getting very close to the year 1600. No imperial authority, no mandate, but Wu holding on to it. And actually not... If they had any, they wouldn't be losing it all that fast. Uh, seems that Miao has been spit out of Huai down here. And Ming given back another province in Waichou. I mean, Emperor Wu's done as well as they can. I mean, they've lost their mandate. They should be losing wars against people, but... Eh, we'll see. Former Emperor Yan, I, I, I don't think I'm going to uh, refer to them as only their tag for the rest of the game, <laughs> frankly. Oh yeah, 1600 passed. Uh, but anyways, former Emperor Yan has continued to expand uh, and done well for themselves, t uh, eating most of Jin. Okay, let's check the great powers. Emperor Wu, a great power, though they don't have any colonialism or any printing press. Uh, they do have 551 development, but only 275 without. They have eclipsed Venice, though. Poland in 7th with 290. The Mamluks in 6th with 415. Persia in 5th with 554. 832 as soon as they get the printing press. That would be good for 2nd place. Great Britain in 4th with 590. Austria in 3rd with 633. Russia in second with 800, and Spain still in first with 884. Check and see if global trade has spawned. Yep, it has, and it has, as expected, spawned in London. So the British, uh, not doing all that much on the European continent. They've actually lost Calais back to Brabant. Not sure if they lost a war or had an embezzler that sold it, or uh, what ended up going on. King Alfred II Lancaster is an excellent ruler. I mean, too military, not the best, but uh, they're still caught up in all text, and he is an intri intricate web weaver. He's just, and he's strict. Strict and excellent ruler personality. 5% discipline. So good. So tasty. Still gotta love the uh, expanded Odiev here. And... I, I don't know where Bulgaria and uh, Ryazan, or sorry, Bulgaria and Ragusa's army went. Well, there's Ragusa's there. Perhaps they've given up the fight. They're still involved, but uh, Bulgaria's army 
is gone, and uh, both of their provinces under siege. So, rough stuff for them. This war for Tuchel, war against the uh, newly alive, but perhaps not for long, Teutons, still going on because of all the tags involved in that war, that being Novgorod's Trade League. Novgorod itself has been quite reduced by all those wars with Russia, but they still lead a trade league of a lot of tags. Let's count them. Holstein, Riga, Teutonic, er, the Teutons... Provence, East Frisia, Magdeburg, Pomerania, Milan, Sicily, Utrecht, the city of Pirkanma, and the city of Viborg. I just listed them. I lost count around seven. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen cities in Novgorod's Trade League. Not bad for a tag that has been beaten down so many times by its greedy Russian neighbor. I seem to recall Venice having a pretty big one at some point, too, but their trading league is just gone. Are they, uh... Oh, my. Venice elected, re-elected one too many times. Now under the guidance of a Lord Protector, Simone Grithi. And as soon as he dies, Venice will be a monarchy. I've seen that happen in a few games, but uh, we're seeing it unfold before our very eyes now. Tunis now reduced to only the city of Tunis and Susa by the forces of Morocco. Is Morocco still allied with the Mamluks? They are, and they've also secured alliances with Songhai and Kong. That's got to be rough for Songhai. You'd think that they might want to expand into Kong, but they'd have to fight their ally to do it. Genet, a possible target, and would get Kong into a war without Morocco's help. But honestly, this is probably all just going to get eaten by Spain eventually anyways. Spain not doing much down here in the south. They still haven't colonized Senku. Have they gone elsewhere? Uh, we did see that they were colonizing the La Plata region. They've actually taken the westernmost portions of Cuba. Or of, yes, of uh, Cuba. And make that the easternmost portions, portions of Cuba the island. Uh, so it is now Spanish West Indies come down here. The Caribbean pretty well split between Britain and Spain. Might invite some uh, wars between them later. The <clears throat> Mexican tag still pretty much left to their own devices. Quiche actually still... Kalima and Tarascon still his vassals. Still completely unwilling to help him. Tlaxcala, itself a vassal of Todanak. That's almost like a turn the tables sort of thing, uh, except you have to be a colonial nation to do, to do that. Todanak, a vassal of Tlaxcala at one point in the past, and uh, that's gone the other way now. Norway, still with only three provinces up here, uh, but Newfoundland continuing to expand. They have colonized into the province of Algonquin, and should they go over to Nipissing, or uh, is that Kitchissippi? Or is it Hushalaga? Yeah, they'd want to uh, colonize Hushalaga for that inland center of trade in the Gulf of St. Lawrence node. And what have we here? Is that Brabant? No, that's Toulouse! Toulouse has become a colonizer and has begun colonizing Eastern America, including the rather decent provinces of Chesapeake and Roanoke. Probably thinking they'll go after Delaware and Anticoke and uh, trying to colonize around Chesapeake Bay here pretty soon. Uh, England has finally gotten down here as well, colonizing Manhattan, a estuary in uh, that region. And that does give them a lot of boundaries. Well, okay, it gives them two borders with two tribes. Attacking the tribes a uh, pretty decent way to expand one's colonial hoardings, uh, especially if one makes them concede colonial regions after uh, one has gotten a colonial nation there. So Charka still not able to form Inca. Uh, 
they're far stronger than any of their fellows. Norway has an army down here. What? But the clock is ticking. As soon as the Spaniards have contact with them, I think that's going to just go. And hey, look, here's Rapa Nui. I think that might be Easter Island, isn't it? Well, the sea zone's out, uh, called Easter Island, so I'm going to take that as a yes. Still no colony, ugh, colonial stuff happening down in Australia. Uh, Perak, though, has begun colonizing, has, has actually colonized southern Sumatra. So uh, perhaps we'll see one of the Indonesian tags actually start trying to colonize Australia. Maybe New Zealand as well. Emperor Wu at war with Khmer and Lan Na on one hand, and Yan on the other. Second Cambodian conquest of Indrapura, <coughs> so trying to defend against Khmer. But then we have the Wu Yan war over Chinese hegemony. Despite the utter lack of mandate, Yan winning that battle. Sorry. Because of the utter lack of mandate, Yan winning that battle. I get all these emperors confused, and that was me knocking over a, thankfully not full, coffee cup. Uh, would have gone on the floor instead of on my computer anyways, so I, that's... I was in no danger, let's put it that way. Can't help but wonder when Venice is going to make its move on Constantinople. Uh, <laughs> we've had some Catholic zealots prop up in Bulgaria. Uh, Bulgaria... Her province is Catholic, but spawning Orthodox, so that explains that. And Ken are just continuing to think about going after them and just, just not deciding to uh, faint and faint and faint again. We do have Cologne with a 10 stack over here and Odiev doing nothing. Odiev guaranteed by Russia, but no longer allied to them. That means bad things might be happening to them sometime soon. They do have a pretty big alliance chain. They're allied with some good guys in Nitra and Gascony, both which can help with about 30k each, as well as Sicily, Theodoro, and the city of Burgas, uh, which will give fewer than 30k, but can still help, perhaps. Really not expecting that from Sicily, though uh, they've been trapped on Malta for a long time. We did at one point see Venice actually sieging down Crete. Crete with a smaller army now, but uh, not a vassal of Venice, so... Uh, I just have no clue what Venice was doing over here. I, I don't know. They are at war with Nitra and Odiev again. How has that come to pass? That would be the Nitran conquest of Slavonia. So yes, guessing that uh, earlier coalition war did end in a white peace... And uh, it's been at least five years. Nitra going for Venice again. Venice now without that massive trade league to support them does have a ton of vassals and still allied with the knights. But I think Nitra and Odiev might have this. Could be that Venice's expansion into this area is over. Croatia has now lost some of its provinces back to Hungary. Land has just been changing hands in this area, and I have no clue why. Uh, perhaps Croatia's? Ruler is an embezzler? He has a Lancaster, that's fun. Nah, instead a well-connected lawgiver. Uh, Hungary's ruler benevolent but greedy. Hungary Protestant, by the way, that's interesting. But Nitra still Catholic, Odiev still Orthodox. Great ruler for them, 643, nothing to sneeze at. Poland having to deal with some noble rebels. Make that Magnet Rebels. Wonder if they're... Well, they never had the Sejum in this, though now that they've integrated Lithuania, perhaps... Uh, regardless, they have an elective monarchy now. Ended up with a 061. That's pretty rough for them. Great for Diplo, though. Regardless, their Magnets are angry with them. 
not fun for the poles. Usually when you're uh, trying to deal with the Serum, you want to be a little more powerful than that. Anyways, I'm sure you heard that, that being the timer. So this episode of The Great Partition is over. Thank you all for watching. Have a good one.